안녕하세요. This is a bonus lesson only for pronunciation. We don't really think pronunciation is the most important part when you learn Korean. But precise pronunciation does make you look more fluent. Plus, there are many pronunciation rules you should learn to go to the next level. And pronunciations you should distinguish to communicate properly. We wouldn't say that this is a mandatory lesson, but hope you guys all watch this video before you start the main lesson. Okay, let's start. We don't think you need to learn the pronunciation of each alphabet all over again. Let's check out the only confusing ones together. Let's start with the vowels. When you talk about the difference between vowels, you need to see the shape of your lips and the position of your tongue. For example, when you pronounce ah, you open your mouth big and your tongue takes the lowest position. Well, you don't actually position your tongue at the bottom of your mouth deliberately when you pronounce a ah, vowel. Your tongue naturally goes down because you open your mouth big. Anyway, what you need to know is just the biggest difference from the other vowels. That's enough. Because you must be already able to imitate the sound almost exactly after lesson 1 and 2. By the way, the red parts are the lips. And the pink part is the tongue. Hope you guys have no problem with the drawings because we drew them with our bare hands. Isn't that cute? You are so proud of that. Let's see how to distinguish between a vowel sound and o vowel sound. We saw many foreigners had a difficulty distinguishing these two vowels. Of course, we know some of you have no problem with it. Anyway, when you pronounce a vowel, and o vowel, your tongue goes in the middle. Well, your tongue doesn't take the exactly the same position when you pronounce a and o, but it kind of does. That's why it's a little bit hard for someone to distinguish them. O vowel sounds like the a sound of a head or u sound of bus. It's closer to the U sound of bus these days. Of course, the A sound of a head and U sound of bus are not exactly the same. We don't think English vowel sounds represent the exact Korean vowel sounds anyway, but you can get a hint from it at least. And O vowel sounds like the A sound of talk. Again, the sound of the English alphabet cannot represent that of Korean alphabet exactly. It's just O sound. O. The biggest difference between two sounds is the shape of your lips. When you make the first O sound, you just open your mouth slightly. But when you make O sound, you purse your lips like you whistle. You can stick out your lips even excessively when you practice pronouncing O sound if it's confusing. Okay? That's it. It's nothing, right? Let's learn the difference between U sound and U sound. The first vowel sounds U and the second vowel sounds U. Can you tell the difference? We understand you guys have problem pronouncing the first U vowel because you might not have this vowel sound in your language. So we couldn't find any English alphabet example. But that doesn't mean this U sound doesn't exist in English. Just you guys don't have the vowel which transcribes this sound. For example, the adjective great has one syllable in English. But you have to split it into four syllables if you want to write it in Hangul. G, re, e, t. Because in Korean, you cannot put two vowels in one single syllable. Furthermore, Consonant alone cannot make any sound. Hangul has u vowel, 
Therefore, the first G sound has to make one independent syllable, k, with u vowel. Okay, when you make both u and u vowels, your tongue takes the highest position. That's why it's really hard for you to distinguish between them. If it's hard for you, Japanese has only one vowel sound, which is kind of in the middle of u. And u sound. When you make the first u sound, your teeth get closer, almost close enough to shut, while spreading your lips a little bit, as shown in the drawing. This drawing is perfect. I love it. But when you pronounce u vowel, you purse your lips as if you kiss someone. Oh, please don't tell me you kiss differently. Anyway, this u. Vowel sounds like the double O of book or rooster. Of course, the exact sound of them are different in English, but you can get a hint from them. U. Originally, Korean distinguished short vowel from long vowel sound. However, nowadays, people never really distinguish them. So you don't have to worry about the length of the vowel sounds. Again, when you make U sound. You close your teeth while spreading your lips a little bit, but when you make u sound, you purse your lips excessively as if you kiss someone. So when you pronounce both o and u vowels, you stick out your lips or purse your lips. That's the most obvious difference. O as if you whistle, u as if you kiss. Let's take a look at these two vowels. The first vowel sounds a, and the second vowel sounds a. Do you recognize the difference between them? As we said in our first lesson, people don't distinguish them these days. No matter what other learning materials say, nobody even knows the exact difference. If you insist to know, the first a sounds like the first e sound of energy, and the second a. Sounds like the first a sound of apple, as we said in the first lesson. If you really want to distinguish them in Korean, you open your mouth less and position your tongue in the middle when you pronounce the first a sound, and you open your mouth more and position your tongue at the bottom of your mouth when you pronounce the second a sound. But again. People don't really distinguish them these days. Guess you guys don't have any problem pronouncing these four iotized vowels. We already told you that you don't have to know what iotized means. We just want you to know that they all start with e vowel sound. For example, the first ya vowel consists of e vowel sound and a vowel sound. So if you make the sound longer and slower, like ia, ia, it starts with e vowel sound, and only a sound remains in the end. So it becomes ya sound, ia, ya. Maybe this is not that important. Next. We guess you don't have any problem with making the exact sound of the compound vowels as long as you can pronounce the single vowel sounds correctly. But let's check out these three compound vowels together, though. You know how to pronounce these compound vowels, don't you? The first one sounds we, we, even though it is the compound of the single o and e vowel, o plus. E don't make we sound, so we told you it's kind of an exception. A long time ago, this vowel was not one of the compound vowels, and was pronounced u, u. But nowadays, it's pronounced as a compound vowel with two vowel sounds. Nobody pronounces it as a single vowel sound nowadays. Nobody. And it is the same sound as o plus e, oe, oe. 
And amazingly, u plus e also sounds very similar. u, e, ue, ue. Not exactly the same because this one starts with u vowel sound, ue, but very similar. So the first one sounds ue, and the second one sounds ue. And the third one sounds we. It might be very hard for you to tell which one is which when you hear them from the native speakers. That's the point. Don't worry. Don't distinguish them. If you can't, they sound almost same to me too. Let's learn about the difference between consonants then. Please look at these three consonants. Let's hear the sound of each first. The first consonant is g. G. And the second consonant is k, k. And the last consonant is g, g. A lot of foreigners don't understand the difference between these three types of consonants in Hangul. We'll tell you why and tell you how to distinguish between them. Let's take a look at the second consonant first because it might be easier to find a similar sound to this one in your mother tongue. The name of the second consonant is Q, Q. But as we told you, you don't have to know the name of the consonants. Anyway, it sounds K, K. We told you that Hangul K consonant sounds like the English alphabet K. Sounds without vocal cords vibration like the English alphabet K are called voiceless sound. You know that. It is said that if you touch your vocal cords when you pronounce K sound, your vocal cords are not vibrating. And the same thing happens when you pronounce Korean K consonant. Well, you might think it's still vibrating. It's because of the vowel sound you are making together with. All the vowel sounds are voiced sounds with vocal cords vibration. Anyway, it vibrates a lot less when you pronounce the English alphabet K and Korean K consonant. So you can say that the English alphabet K and the Hangul K consonant are almost the same sound. Then we guess most of you guys don't have any problem pronouncing Korean K consonant. How about the first consonant G? G. The name of the first consonant is kiok, kiok, but again, you don't have to know that. Anyway, it sounds k, k. A lot of people don't understand the difference between the first k and the second k consonant. We told you that the first k consonant sounds like the English alphabet G. Well, we have to accept the fact that it can be quite controversial. Because the English alphabet G is one of the voiced sounds. In other words, you vibrate your vocal cords when you pronounce G sound. But it is said that the Korean G consonant is a voiceless sound when it comes as the first sound of a word. I don't actually totally agree with this, but school teaches like that. I just want to say it is just the same G. Consonant wherever it goes because it's simpler that way. I think it's just because the first syllable is normally stressed syllable in Korean, so you put more stress on the first syllable. So Koreans pronounce the first syllable stronger than the next syllable. As a result of that, you push more air out of your mouth. That's why k consonant sounds closer to k. Consonant, which is one of the voiceless sounds when it comes as the first sound of a word. Actually, Koreans don't know how to distinguish between voiceless sounds and voiced sounds because we don't use the concept of voiceless sounds and voiced sounds when we learn Hangul. Anyway, Hangul k consonant sounds more explosive than the English alphabet G, and the air comes out of your throat. Hits the roof of your mouth, k, k, especially when it comes as the first sound of a word, k, k. 
So the sound of Korean k consonant could be closer to a voiceless sound k, especially when it comes as the first sound of a word. But your vocal cords vibrate more than when you pronounce the English alphabet k. k, k. And it is said that k consonant becomes a voiced sound from the second block of a word. But as I said, I just want you to think that it's just the same k consonant wherever it goes. Again, according to the Korean standard pronunciation rule, the Korean k consonant is a voiceless sound when it comes as the first sound of a word. That's why k sounds very very similar to k sound when you hear it as the first sound of a word. As K is also one of the voiceless sounds. That's why the first K consonant and the second K consonant sound almost the same to foreigners while they are totally different to Koreans. We like to say Korean K consonant is somewhere between the English G and K. We told you that the first K Consonant sounds like the English alphabet G because there is no other option. We cannot say that the first K consonant sounds like the English alphabet K because in that way there will be two K sounds in Korean. There is actual K sound the second K consonant in Hangul. Okay, so you have to practice hard to distinguish them. K. K and K. K. Let's see an example. Kogi. Kogi. Which means meat in Korean. The consonant K is used for the both first and second block. The correct pronunciation is Kogi. Kogi. As you hear, the first K. Sound could be closer to ko with a k sound, or maybe not. And the second gi sound could be closer to g sound. Kogi, kogi. So the first ku consonant of the first letter ko is a voiceless sound, and it sounds more like k. The second ku Consonant of the second letter k is a voiced sound, and it sounds more like g. But if you use the English g sound for the first letter, it will sound more like gogi, gogi. Okay, but it is actually pronounced kogi, kogi, not gogi. The first k. Might sound like the English alphabet K, but if you use the actual English K sound for the first letter, it will sound more like kogi, kogi, than kogi, kogi. Do you recognize the difference? No, no worries. It's okay. Even though you pronounce it kogi, kogi, everybody can understand what it means, but. We want you guys to practice distinguishing between k sound and k sound. You don't even have to know what voiceless and voiced sound are. Just think about the things we told you here. If you really want to improve your pronunciation based on the sound you hear from us, okay? How about the third one? K. K. It's romanized as double k, but that doesn't tell you anything. It might not be possible to find the English alphabet that represents this "g" sound, but in my personal opinion, it sounds very similar to the "ch" sound of school, school with the native English speaker's accent. Because you guys don't seem to make "k" sound like school, school, but you pronounce it more like school, school. Maybe not, but it sounds like it to me. Anyway. Vocal cords vibration is not a good indicator for this consonant. 
The only way to distinguish them from the others is the amount of the air out of your mouth. The strength of the air has little to do with this actually. When you pronounce g consonant, you basically position your tongue in the same position as you pronounce the first g consonant and the second k consonant. But when you pronounce the third consonant g, you close your throat rapidly. As a result of that, your tongue might move backward rapidly too, so that no air can come out of your mouth. Do you understand? G, g, no air. When you pronounce the second consonant k, which sounds like the English alphabet k, you push a lot of air out of your mouth. So consonants like k are called aspirated sound, but you don't have to know that. Anyway, when you pronounce k consonant, a lot of air comes out of your mouth, and you can even feel that the air is tickling the roof of your mouth. And when you pronounce the first k consonant, you push out less air than k consonant. k, k. Okay? K, k, and k, k, and k, k. Again, k, k, and k, k, and k, k. I will read the same word which means meat three times with three different pronunciations. Tell me which one is correct. 고기 and 고기 and 고기 Again 고기 and 고기 and 고기 Now can you tell the difference? Hope you can. The same thing happens to these three consonants. The first consonant is d, d, and the second consonant is t, t, and the third consonant is d, d. We told you that the first consonant d sounds like the English alphabet d because we don't have a choice, but Hangul D consonant and English D sound are not same actually, but it doesn't sound like the English alphabet T either, at least to Koreans. Therefore, D is the closest sound in English. Exactly the same things we saw in the previous page apply to these three consonants too. The first consonant D is a voiceless sound when it comes as the first sound of a word. It sounds very close to T sound, but Koreans don't think it sounds T at all. The Hangul D sounds more explosive than the English alphabet D sound, and less aspirated than the English alphabet T sound. The air comes out of your mouth, hits the palate, the roof of your mouth, more strongly when you pronounce the Hangul D consonant than the English alphabet D. But the amount of the air comes out of your mouth should not be as much as the English alphabet T. You should know that it could sound T when it comes as the first sound of a word, but it doesn't actually sound T. It just sounds D. D. And you push a little bit of air out of your mouth when you pronounce D. Not much, a little bit. D. The second consonant sounds T. T. This one is almost the same as the English alphabet T. You push relatively much air out of your mouth when you pronounce it. T. T. We guess this one is easy for you. The third one sounds D. D. When you pronounce this one, you close your throat rapidly so that it can block the air comes out of your mouth. As you pronounce G consonant, you've seen in the previous page. D. D. 
Let's pronounce the real word together. It's tado, tado, which means tea ceremony. Tado. The first ta sounds more like t, but it's not exactly t. It's just Hangul consonant d sound, and the second do sounds more like d. But we don't want you to think that they are different sounds because it's more confusing. It's tado, tado. Anyway, if it's too hard to pronounce Korean d sound, we recommend you pronounce just the English alphabet d sound. It's much better than using t sound if you really want to communicate properly. Because if you use t sound, it will sound like tado, tado. And it's totally different word. So just dado or tado, tado. Okay. I'll pronounce it again three times with three different sounds. Tell me which one is correct. Tado, tado, and tado, tado, and tado, tado. Okay. Tado. And tado, and tado. Let's check out these three consonants. Exactly the same thing applies to them too. The first consonant is b, b. We told you that it sounds like the English alphabet b, but not exactly, because the English alphabet b is one of the voiced sounds with your vocal cords vibration. But when you pronounce Hangul b consonant, you make more explosive sound with less vocal cords vibration. It is said that it's more like a voiceless sound, especially when it comes as the first sound of a word. So it could sound like the English alphabet p, but you should know that you push out less air when you pronounce Korean b consonant than the English alphabet p. So they are not same either. It's just b, b. If it's too hard for you to pronounce b consonant exactly, it would be much better for you to pronounce it as the English alphabet b than p. Believe me, no matter what others say. The second consonant is p, p. This one actually sounds like the English alphabet p, and it's one of the actual voiceless sounds. The third one is b, b. When you pronounce this one, you block the air comes out of your mouth. B, b. Let's pronounce the real word together. Pabo, pabo, which means a fool. Pabo. The first pa could sound like pa with p sound. But it's different. It's pa, pabo, pabo. Okay. I'll read it three times with three different initial consonants. See if you can tell which one is correct. Pabo, pabo, and pabo, pabo, and pabo, pabo. Again, pabo and pabo and pabo. We don't even have to explain about this page because exactly the same thing happens to these three consonants. We told you that the first consonant, j, sounds like the English alphabet J, but it could sound like the English alphabet CH. When it comes as the first sound of a word, it could sound like it, but that doesn't mean they are exactly the same sound. The Hangul j consonant could sound like ch sound because when you pronounce the Hangul j j sound, you push more air against your hard palate or between your teeth than the English alphabet. J with less vocal cords vibration. 
Hard palate is the hard part of the roof of your mouth, right before the gum ridge, a little bit inside of the gum ridge. The actual spot you make the hangul j sound is your hard palate, by the way. And the second consonant, c sounds a lot closer to the English alphabet ch sound. And you push a lot of air against your hard palate or between your teeth. c and when you pronounce the last consonant, your tongue touches your hard palate slightly and close your throat so that the air can't come out of your mouth. Okay? Let's see the actual word. Which is the equivalent to the adverb often. Or often. Chaju. As you hear the sound, the first cha sounds very similar to ch sound. I will read this word three times with three different sounds. Please tell me which one is correct. Chaju. Chaju. And Chaju. Chaju. And Chaju, chaju. Again, chaju. And chaju. And chaju. If it's really hard to pronounce the first ch sound, just pronounce j sound instead, like jaju, jaju. It will help you communicate much better than pronouncing it chaju with a ch sound because chaju with ch sound means a different word. Let's take a look at these two consonants. The first column is blank, but this time the second consonant and the third consonant could be very confusing for foreigners. Vocal cords vibration has little to do with this. They are both regarded as voiceless sounds in Korean. The first consonant is pronounced s, s, and the second consonant is pronounced s, s. Can you recognize the difference? It might be more difficult for you to make the first s sound. We told you it sounds like the English alphabet s, but as you know, the English alphabet never be exactly the same as Hangul. When you make s sound, you push relatively much air out of your mouth with less friction between your teeth. S, s. The air is not disturbed that much between your teeth. The second consonant is pronounced s, s. This one is actually closer to the English alphabet S. For example, when you say sorry, so, sorry, you make very similar sound to the Hangul S sound. When you pronounce Hangul S consonant, you make strong friction on the back side of your teeth so that the air won't come out of your mouth that much. S, S. Therefore, when you make the sound of the entire double consonants, the amount of the air comes out of your mouth has to be blocked or limited. Okay? Let's see the example. Soju. Soju. It's a renowned Korean alcoholic beverage. It's written soju. But most of the people pronounce it soju. Soju with the second s sound. Why? Maybe because these days people tend to like pronouncing stronger. Maybe it's because Korean people are under a lot of stress all the time, so they are always intense. That's why they like to make stronger sound with the double consonants. I don't know, it's my best guess. So it's written soju, soju, but people tend to pronounce it soju, soju. Soju and soju. 
Let's see one more good example. What is this? Yes, it's the English alphabet C. Everybody can pronounce this. C. How about this one? C. C. Can you recognize the difference between the English alphabet C and Korean word C? Again, C and C. Difficult? I think so too. Let's see the next one. It's pronounced C. C. I read them one by one again. See if you can tell the difference. C. C. And C. C. And C. C. Again. C. And C. And C. Let's learn what makes Korean L consonant different from the English L and R. It has something to do with the exact position of your tongue. When you pronounce the English alphabet L, the tip of your tongue touches a little bit more front side of your gum ridge or tooth ridge, almost the back of your teeth. But when you pronounce the Hangul L consonant, the tip of your tongue touches a little bit more back side of your tooth ridge or the front side of your hard palate. L. L. This is the most obvious difference. And when you pronounce the English alphabet R, obviously you roll your tongue so that it doesn't touch any part of your palate. Some people say that the Korean L consonant sounds more like R when it's used as the first sound of a block. And it sounds more like L when it's used as the final sound of a block. Well, that's not totally wrong, but as you see, the tip of your tongue should touch a little bit backside of your tooth ridge when you pronounce L consonant anyway. So it doesn't sound like R at all. Let's read the English words which have R and L with Hangul L sound. Roller, like roller skate. It's pronounced roller, but if you apply Korean L sound to both R and L in this word, it will sound lolla, lolla. In English, roller. In Korean, lolla. Can you recognize the difference? Next, rolling, like rolling stones. With a Hangul L sound, it will sound lolling, lolling rather than rolling, because Korean doesn't have R sound. So you can find out that Korean L consonant sounds rather closer to the English L sound than R sound, if you have to choose. Let's see one more word. Rolex. It's not the brand name of the watch, because there are two L's here. Please don't mix up, it's just an example. Anyway, if you use Korean L sound for both R and L in this word, it will sound Rolex, Rolex, rather than Rolex. Hope it's clearer now. Do you remember this? We divided the consonants into three groups to make it easy for you to understand the final sound and read Hangul block. You will not have a big problem to read Hangul based on this, but there are a couple of more things you should know to go to the next level. Let's learn about that. First of all, you should know that according to the Korean standard pronunciation rule, only seven sounds can come as a final sound of a block. Again, the only seven sounds can come as a final sound of a block. Please don't mix up. We are talking about the pronunciation, the sound, not consonant itself. So when you write Hangul, of course, you can use all the 14 consonants and 5 double consonants and even consonant clusters as a final of a block. However, the entire final sounds should be regarded as one of these 7 sounds. 
Do you get it? Don't worry, we'll explain more. The seven consonants are ku, nu, lu, tu, mu, pu, and u. Let's see the group one first and find out what we are talking about. There are nine consonants in the group one. But the first ku consonant and the second ku consonant are both pronounced ku consonant when they come as a final consonant. It's not that difficult to memorize because ku and ku consonants are from the same sound family anyway. Your tongue makes almost the same shape when you pronounce both ku and ku consonants and they even look similar. Now you get it a little bit more? There is a specific reason why they sound the same when they come as a final consonant, even though they are not the same consonants. We will tell you very shortly, just hold on for a moment. Let's take a look at the second last consonant, bu, and the last consonant, pu. According to the Korean standard pronunciation rule, when they are used as a final consonant, they are both pronounced as the second last bu consonant. It's also not that difficult to memorize because bu and pu consonants are from the same sound family. Your lips make the same exploding sound when you pronounce both bu and pu consonants. Let's see the group two then. There are su, ju, and chu consonants in the group 2. And we told you that they are all pronounced as the English alphabet T when they are used as a final consonant of a block. What else is pronounced as T when it's used as a final consonant? Yes, T consonant and T consonant from the group 1. So let's move these two consonants back to the group 2 then. So all these five consonants are pronounced as the English alphabet T when they are used as a final consonant. But according to the Korean standard pronunciation rule, all these five consonants in the group two are pronounced to consonant. Okay? We mentioned about it in our lesson two. Don't worry, just listen to our explanation casually. You will learn what it means eventually. Let's take a look at the consonants in the group 3 then. We only have two consonants. The first U consonant is one of the seven consonants. So just leave it there. It's pronounced as the English alphabet NG anyway when it's used as a final consonant and it will never change. How about the second HU consonant? Some of the Korean learning materials characterize this HU consonant as the group 2, saying that it sounds like the English alphabet T when it's used as a final sound of a block. Well, it's partially true in only one or two cases, but this HU consonant is silent in most of the cases, so you don't have to think that it belongs to the group 2, okay? That's it. Now you know something not many people know, the principle of seven final sounds. Again, according to the Korean standard pronunciation rule, when the Hangul consonants are used as a final in a block, they are pronounced as one of these seven consonants. Ku, Nu, Lu, Tu, Mu, Pu, and U. No exception. This is actually super important rule. When you just want to read Hangul, you don't have to know this rule. But if you want to learn Korean pronunciation rules properly later, you must know what you've learned on this page. Let's learn one more important fact about the final sound. This is not a rule, this is the fact. Book. When you pronounce book in English, it is totally okay to make the final K sound slightly. Of course, sometimes it's not that obvious, but anyway, it's okay, right? It's mainly because you exhale the air until you completely finish the K sound in English. But in Korean, you don't complete the final sound like that. And you block the air comes out of your mouth when you use ku, ku, bu, 
P consonants from the group one and S Ch Ch D T consonants, the entire consonants from the group two as a final. So if you pronounce book in a Korean way, it would sound like book. It's not book or book. It's just book. Book without k or k sound. Book. Got it? It's not that difficult to memorize because the entire group three has nothing to do with this. And what is called sympathetic sound, n, l, m consonants, including u consonant from the group three, are not applied. Sympathetic sound means the sound which is made by vibrating your nasal cavity or oral cavity. It's also related to the term nasal sound and voiced sound, but let's not talk about it. You know what we mean anyway, right? So this is exactly why k consonant sound the same as k consonant when they are used as a final sound, because you don't complete the sound. Since your tongue makes the similar shape and takes the similar position when you pronounce both k and k sound, they make the same sound when they are used as a final because you don't complete the sound. Now you understand perfect, right? The same reason apply to b and p consonants and all the consonants in the group too. Let's read these letters together then. The first letter sounds kak, kak, not kak, and the second letter would sound the same kak as the first letter kak. Does even though the second letter used a different consonant as a final. By the way, there's no such a letter like the second one in Korean. It's just an example, so just focus on the sound. And the third letter sounds pop, pop, not pop or bob. You don't make b sound at the end. It's just pop, pop. And the last letter would sound the same pop. Even though it has p consonant as a final. By the way, there is no such word like the second one in Korean. It's just an example. It's nothing, right? And all these five letters with the different final consonants from the group two sound the same theoretically according to the Korean standard pronunciation rule. They all sound not with the d consonant as a final. Are you okay with this? The final s, j, c. Consonants are from the original group too. Therefore, they all sounds like the Romanized alphabet T when they are used as a final sound. And the T consonant originally has T sound as an initial. Therefore, needless to say, its final sound is also T. But according to the Korean standard pronunciation rule, they all sound the same as not with a D consonant as a final. It's mainly because in Korean you don't complete the final sound of the final consonant. Not with a d consonant can be romanized as n a d, but it doesn't sound nad, nad. It sounds nad without the final d sound at the end. Nad, nad. That's exactly why these five letters sound the same in Korean. It might be a little bit weird for you, but it's very important. Remember that and move on. Let's learn about the difference between the English syllable and Korean syllable. Please check out this English word first. Spring. How many syllables does it have? Yes, only one syllable with only one vowel, right? But in Korean, when you think about the syllable or writing block, you should remember these two things all the time. First. Hangul consonant cannot make a sound alone, without a vowel, like the s and p in spring. Second, only one vowel can be used in a block. One compound vowel is regarded as a one single vowel. So the first s in the word spring must be one separate syllable or one separate block in Korean. And p should also be one separate syllable or block, and the rest ring can be one separate syllable. 
Then which vowel should we use for the S sound of spring in Korean? Yes, you should use U vowel with S consonant. And you should use the same U vowel for the next P with a Hangul P consonant. And the last ring can be substituted with the initial L consonant and E vowel. And final, U consonant, which sounds like ng, like the English alphabet NG when it's used as a final. S P ding, S P ding. So it's three syllables in Korean. Breath groups. We got an email from one of our precious Korean learners asking about the breath groups in Korean. So let's talk a little bit about it on this page. Actually, there is no rule for breath groups in Korean. Basically, you can breathe when there is a space between the words in Korean. It's so obvious, right? But there is something you cannot do. You never put a space between a word and a particle. So you never read them separately. So it's one breath group, a word and a particle. And in Korean, in a lot of cases, the final sound of the formal block affects the initial sound of the letter block according to the standard pronunciation rules. In that case, you should read the formal block and the letter block continuously even though there is a space between them. That's it, just listen carefully when we read the sentences in the main lessons and see what consecutive elements should be read as a one group. You will learn them eventually. Before that, you will be fine with the things you've learned on this page. Let's talk a little bit about the Korean pronunciation rules and wrap up this bonus lesson. You might have realized that sometimes Korean letters are not pronounced as they are written and that makes you crazy. It is true that each Hangul consonant and vowel has only one sound, but they are not read as they are written sometimes. Why? It's mainly because of the difference between the correct spelling and the actual sound. People tend to change the sound from what is written to what is easy to pronounce. It's called sound assimilation and stuff. For example, water. In American English, it is pronounced water. But you cannot deny the fact that there is the alphabet T used in this word. And in British English, it's still pronounced water with a T sound. We are not expert in the history of American English, but it might have changed to water because people like it better that way when they actually pronounce it. Maybe it's easier or smoother to Americans. Korean pronunciation rule is something like this. The standard Korean pronunciation rule was established to allow certain combinations pronounced smoother and easier. But you should also know that there are quite a lot of exceptions, which makes you crazy one more time. There are 30 clauses of the Korean standard pronunciation rule, and 21 clauses of them are about sound changes and consonant clusters. These 21 clauses are about the final sound of the formal block affects the initial sound of the letter block, or the other way around. So it's mostly about the consonants. But the good news is, almost no Korean know them all exactly. Well, because they are native speakers, they don't have to know. They had learned how to speak first before they learned how to write. Even though they learned all the rules in their school days, nobody really can tell what they were. Therefore, you don't have to know them all either. You don't have to wrap your head and try to memorize them all. You will learn them one by one from the most important ones in our main lesson. So don't worry too much. See you in the main lesson then. 안녕히 계세요.